Hello everybody, my name is Garrett and today we'll be going through some uh, Shogun 2 tips. I frequent the Total War subreddit on reddit.com pretty frequently and there's usually s at least one person on the front page almost every day asking, hey, I was playing Shogun 2 campaign and I lost. Can I get some help? And almost every time I have to link to a uh, very good guide to Shogun 2 by Frog Beast. But it is an extremely long read and I think most people just skip over it. So what I will be doing is actually trying to quickly go through a campaign that I've already started because most people particularly have trouble with the realm divide and their economy and things of that sort where either they do the realm divide and they have all of Japan trying to attack them all at once and they weren't prepared for it or their economy collapses because they were making all of their money from trade instead of having a strong domestic economy um, we'll be going through what to do at the Realm Divide and how to prepare for it before you even get there. What kind of armies to build. A good thing to have is a Japan that's not very united very well before you get there. You see, you have the Iko Iki and the Takeda in my game fighting against each other. If you go into the dipl diplomacy screen you can see the Takeda and the Iko Iki. Really, they don't like each other. In fact, no one likes the Iko Iki. They're not very nice. They're at war with a lot of people. So, Japan's two, two of their biggest clans are fighting each other. But I bet by the time that I go through the Amako and the Matsuda clan and by the time I get to Kyoto one of them will have beaten the other hopefully I don't want to have to fight two clans at once but the main issue is when you get up here and you start fighting for Kyoto you uh, everyone declares war on you because you attack and you try to become Shogun, and then you lose all your money because you were trading with all of Japan, and all of a sudden you don't have any money, and you can't, your armies start routing, and you start losing armies, you start getting attacked from the sea and from the land, and just everything's going to shit as soon as the Realm Divide hits you. What do you need to do? Well, number one thing thing you should do while you're carving this path to Kyoto is making sure that you're building the right buildings at the right settlements. Over here is my first settlement. I have I chose to be a Christian clan, which has its own benefits and minuses. But I uh, I've built chapels. I've built sake dens in most of my towns. Over here I have Archery Dojo and Drill Yard. I have a stable there. I have a Drill Yard and a Chapel. I have a Sake Den. Naginata. But the, the number one thing is roads and farms. Farms generate economy. I mean economy. They generate money and they're a part of your economy. The way it works is each settlement has the wealth, which from depending on what buildings you have, it can come from commerce, from buildings, but every single settlement has farming, and that's where the most of the income comes from. The wealth of the town adds up at the bottom here, and then you have the tax rate, which is how much of the uh, province's money is taken away from the people and given to you as income. 
and right here you have the income of Buzin, which is 259. You can increase your income by either increasing the province wealth or the tax rate. Now, why am I getting into all this? So that you can have the money to pay your soldiers and beat seven clans at once. Because they're all going to have their own economies, they're all going to have their own armies, and you're going to have to fight them. No one is going to help you when the Realm Divide happens. You will be extremely lucky to have even one ally. Even if you started an alliance with them on turn one, by the time turn 80 rolls around, you are not going to have them as a friend anymore. There is an alternative to making a strong domestic economy, but it's risky. You have these trade ports here, which you trade with outside sources like Korea, China, the Portuguese, people like that, and it generates a lot of income. You have to put trade ships in there and you have to defend them because other clans will come with their navies and they will attack you and they will take them. Personally, I don't go for these because navies are extremely expensive and I I hardly involve myself with navies. I focus all my attention on domestic matters on the land and I just leave uh, the navy going to all the other clans. If they want to waste their income on medium boons then go right ahead. I don't need the... I as a player choose not to use trade ports at all. But if you would like to, go ahead. It's, uh, it's your choice. You play this game how you like, within reason, of course. You can't just, uh, you know, max out the castles on every single one of your provinces and have all of them revolt at the same time. But uh, you can choose how you play the game to a certain extent. Right now, I have a giant army at Nagato, which is which has a decent amount of samurai in it, but a lot of Yari Ashigaru and Bo Ashigaru, which are not that great in a fight. Honestly, if you are like me, then you auto-resolve 90% of your battles, and then you fight the other 10%. The battles that are really close, or not close at all, the enemy completely overwhelms you, but you fight it anyway to kill as many as you can and hopefully win. Even if it's a Pyrrhic victory, you know, that's better than a horrible defeat. Army setup and strong economy are the two things that will get you through the Realm Divide. Having an army like this, where you have a sh extremely strong killing force, but you have the versatility of a Yari Samurai unit and a Bow Samurai unit and the Matchlock units. Matchlocks are incredibly useful. And the more generals you can throw in an army, the better. Because they are extremely strong, they're extremely strong cav. They're smaller than most cav units and they'll get torn up by Yari cav and uh, other cav, uh, other spear units, which you... You can dismount them, and they do great against spear units, but then they're more susceptible to cavalry than they were before. It depends on how you play the game, but having two general units in an army is good, because you can use two rallies and two inspires. Having three generals is good, but I wouldn't have more than three, honestly. Uh, katana units are extremely good. They're the backbone of any army you will probably need a lot of them. I have four units. You could have five units or six units. They are pretty expensive at the upkeep cost, but if you're the Shimazu, then they cost cheaper, and they are better than everyone else's katana units. So if you are, you, every single clan has their own special unit that is good at their own trade, and you have to find that unit, and you have to exploit it. The Oda 
uh, just have better Yari Ashigaru and Bo Ashigaru and Matchlock Ashigaru. So if you're the Oda, then it, you would do very well to just spawn mass hordes of Ashigaru in the beginning of the game because they cost less and they're better than everyone else's. So playing as the Oda, you definitely do have an advantage in one aspect, but you're also surrounded by everybody over here, like the Takeda and the Iko Iki, and you're a bit closer to Kyoto, but you have a lot more competition to deal with in the game earlier. Um, these are more intermediate to advanced tips. I wouldn't recommend uh, someone who just bought the game to take these tips under advisement just yet. You should probably play the campaign through easy on the long setting so that you aren't rushed and then come back to this video then but uh... you can stay if you like learn things ahead of time um, I don't want to make this video just us staring at, emptily at a campaign screen but that's where ninety percent of the strategy goes on the battles are fast in this game and you can easily mess things up so planning everything beforehand is absolutely crucial um, the way you want to upgrade your settlements uh, sake dens are incredibly good they give you money and happiness if you can put a sake den in every single town that would be preferable and if you can get happiness up to a certain point then you can tax your people uh, a higher amount you can go on your clan management or uh, your finance management and you can move your tax levels up obviously if I do that then even my capital would revolt but you know, if you uh, if your populace is happy, then you can increase the amount that you tax people and get money that way. Sake dens don't take any food like markets do, so that's why I recommend them instead of markets. Food is incredibly important. Maybe you could sacrifice one food or two food to get a couple markets but I wouldn't recommend it. Honestly, I wouldn't even recommend upgrading that many castles. The, uh, the AI upgraded Heezin all on its own. What I want to do is upgrade Boozin because it's a choke point to get onto my island. So it's very important. Upgrading your castles tactically and not just, you know, randomly, like upgrading Higo's castle, for example. I mean, it is at the most basic castle level, but it doesn't need to be upgraded and consume that extra food point, because what the food points do is add uh, town growth. Town growth, depending on the factors in the town, they increase the town's wealth, which increases the... Uh, province wealth which increases your income so it's always good to have extra food if you just have five or six foods sitting in your over here don't don't freak out like you have to spend it because it's it's actually helping you it's in it's increasing the wealth of your provinces and it's giving you money it's very slow but it does affect you on the longer campaigns and it does affect you the bigger your empire gets the more food you're going to want alright alright I think we've had enough of the uh, the campaign let's go to the main menu and I will look through my battle replays and we'll play a battle and we'll look at that instead of just staring at a campaign screen listening to me ramble we'll uh... watch some people get killed that's always fun you know violence and blood and gore 
Honestly, I don't know. I guess I only have this one. It's an online battle. So uh, we'll go ahead and check it out. I do remember this battle. Kind of. My opponent's name is Y. Um, I, I don't know why his name is Y. We should probably ask why his name is Y. I mean, what a strange name. That's all I can say. This is on the Toko Valley. And I do have a fall of the samurai army, and he has a traditional samurai army. Let's, uh, I'm not moving right now, but let's throw this in slow motion. Right here, we have my general's bodyguard. His name is Hanzo. He's right there in his red outfit. And this is particularly early in my Fall of the Samurai career because I'm using White Tiger Force and one Infante de Marine unit which has a very high reload skill but doesn't have the uh, increased range yet I do have a Spear Levy three White Tigers and a Yari Key and he has some Lone Sword Ashigaru, some Naginata Samurai oh a, a lot of Naginata Samurai and some and his uh, avatar which looks to be a mixture of a melee general uh, let's throw this in normal over here I'm, I'm moving my Yari key up into the hills and the trees to put them in a better position to ambush, flank my enemy wherever he may move to take one of these buildings. We have the farmhouse which increases stamina and the sword dojo which would be very beneficial to him as he is a Shogun 2 traditional army and he spawned near it so naturally he's going to snatch that up as quick as possible his avatar's bodyguard left his uh, horses behind which is a questionable decision but it is his to make I'm moving my Yari Key up into this position to ambush his Lone Sword Ashigaru if they move far away enough from his Naginata Samurai and my fall of the samurai army is moving into position obviously he uh, he gave me just enough of an opportunity to attack this lone sword ashigaru unit in a quite brutal fashion you can see the poor militiaman body tumbling around and uh, I think I did manage to shoot into the Lone Sword Ashigaru as well. I pull my cab out just as the Naginatas come into support. And he is charging right at me. All of my forces are shooting at what was his avatar. He charged them right into my forces. I threw my spear levy right at them right at the, these Naginata Samurai which they are going to tear through this Spear Levy unit but it will give me time for my matchlocks to not my matchlocks, my White Tiger Force to attack them he's got his Naginatas flanking around the Sword Dojo to attack here obviously his Naginatas have high armor rating but they're not faring well against bullets these white tiger force are going to rout quickly against these samurai units and I know that I don't have much time my cav was used to mop up that lone sword ashigaru unit so I knew they weren't gonna come back because they weren't shattered yet they're coming back 
My general bodyguard is pulling back, as well as my Infante de Marine. These White Tiger Force are extremely cheap, and they're almost useless, so I will use them as a way to get more kills with my more useful unit, the Infante de Marine. I did charge right into the backs of these Naginata Samurai, but they have a bonus against Cav, and it didn't do very much. My cab also got shot up by my own unit of Infante de Marine, and this situation looks pretty dire, but for some reason my opponent decided to quit. I don't understand why. He might have lagged out. It's a very possible uh, situation, but... In that eventuality, if he had not left, he might possibly have won, but ultimately that depended on whether or not my Cav could distract his Naginata long enough for my Infante de Marine to get into a better position and keep firing at the Naginata until they routed. They, he didn't have a lot of units left. He didn't have a lot of men left when that uh, battle had ended. My Yari Ki got the most kills because they ran down his uh, Lone Sword Ashigaru. My Infante de Marine got a lot of kills and my White Tiger Force didn't do so great as they got they clashed right into those Naginata Samurais who got a lot of kills. A lot of kills on my inferior uh, rifle infantry. His Lone Sword Ashigaru only got two kills though. And his general didn't get any because they got taken out pretty early in the match. But uh yeah. That's just one unique situation where it could have gone either way, but uh my opponent prematurely left. So, it could have ended in a much slower faction, but it was a good battle. Um, I hope that you all have enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you could do me a big favor and uh, share this video with anyone who you think would enjoy watching it, that would be great. Uh, have a good day, and I'll uh, see you guys on the next video.